our next guest on stage um, is a man who's got a job, founder and CEO of the Atom Factory, which doesn't sound much until you realize, you know, one of the things he does is manage a pop star called Lady Gaga. And when we put our next speaker on the cover of Wired, we kept having to revise the page because the number of followers that Lady Gaga had just kept going up during the day or two we were preparing that cover. So I've just done a, a last minute check. So she's got 30.6 million Twitter followers, 54 million likes on Facebook. And if you look at her online video on YouTube, so on the Vivo site, 2.3 billion views. And that's apart from the Lady Gaga official site. So in conversation with Wired's executive editor, Greg Williams, please can we welcome Troy Carter. monsters to little monsters. <laughs> um, so Troy, let's start with a little context just to, to begin with. You uh, obviously been in the music industry for, for, for many years. <laughs> um, you started out working with uh, Will Smith and DJ Jazzy Jeff. You worked with Sean Coom Coombs at uh, Bar Bad Boy Entertainment. Um, you've managed Eve, you've managed Nelly. Um, you've seen many, many waves of disruption um, going through the music industry. Um, can you just give us a sense of how it's changed over the, you know, your career, what's going, what, what's actually happened? Well, when I got into the business, we were still on cassette tapes. That's, <laughs> you know, so um, it's been a long time. But um, the music industry is constantly disrupted, you know, in terms of format and, um, and different types of music as well. So, you know, it's what we're going through right now, well, what we've gone through over the last 10 years or so is, is not any different from what we've gone through in the past. You know, I think um, the only difference is it happened really quick this time. So usually the industry's kind of in control of the format. Yeah. And, um, and this time the industry wasn't in control of the format. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as David mentioned, you know, Gaga's got this unbelievable um, social media footprint, you mm -hmm. know, 30.6 million Twitter followers and a couple of billion hits on YouTube. Um, Let's get into the sort of the social side of it a little. Was that kind of part of the game plan from from day one? Well, no. It's um, so what we basically got into um, technology just by default, really, mm -hmm. because um, when we first put out the Lady Gaga record, she couldn't get played on the radio. So you know, we we delivered the album, and basically, you know, top forty radio was a lot different at that time, mm -hmm. and. Um, and all of a sudden, she came along. She looked, you know, she didn't look like a typical pop star, and um, and the music was more four on the floor sort of dance music. So people thought of it as club music. So Top Forty Radio wouldn't play it. So for us, we had to go around. And at that time, um, Facebook was just coming out of um, out of colleges and kind of opening up the platform mm -hmm. a bit more wide. Twitter was on the rise. Um, YouTube, you know, was, was, was on the rise, and basically we use um, technology to, to be able to reach this audience. And, you know, and once we got started, you know, she was able to, you know, she's at, you know, 30 some odd million followers now because she, she had sort of a head start on everybody. Mm -hmm. and, um, and also she's, she's just engaging in term, and, and authentic in terms of her interaction with, with, with our audience. Yeah, that's a huge part of her brand. I mean, uh, the fact that she actually gets online and uh, interacts with the fans, I mean, that's, that was a, a very unusual thing when, when she first started doing that. Was that something that you had kind of in mind or? No, you know what, she's, she basically, you know, she's very intuitive when it comes to it. And, mm. and she's just a, a very authentic person offline. Right. So, you know, so she's pretty much what, what you see is what you get. And, um, and I think, you know, just her conversations, because what's interesting, Gaga doesn't use, she doesn't use Facebook, or, or um, she only uses Twitter. And, um, and she uses it very, you know, she uses it, uses it in moderation, actually. So, and I think there's a direct correlation between um, the number of tweets she sends, because right now she's probably somewhere under 2,000 or 2,100 tweets out of, you know, the several years she's been on or whatever. 
and, uh, and the types of messages that, that she sends is a very authentic conversation. So I don't think she inundates her fans with you know, just random tweets <laughs> or whatever. So when she talks to them, they listen. So I'm interested to um, just stepping back a little bit on, on the, the, how you built the brand. Mm -hmm. What was the kind of tipping point? How did you kind of, when did you kind of realize, hang on a second, this has got real momentum? Um, was there a kind of moment that social media really became something that? You know what, it's, um, when, I, when I, we figured out way into it, and, and, and actually the, the, the reality is we're still learning today. Right. You know, so um, even yesterday, you know, I was speaking with, um, with our promoter, Live Nation, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. you know we were talking about ticket sales, and you know we used you know Gaga's platform, Little Monsters, as our pre-sale. So we're learning a lot as, as we go along. But one of the things that we learned is that the the engagement directly between Gaga and her fans is a is a very is very intimate, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. When you have a, an intermediary as far as whether it's radio, whether it's uh, a video channel, television channel, there's a bit of a, is a bit of a disconnection there. So it's, and, and it's very, very, it's, it's passive engagement. So when you turn on the radio, that's not direct interaction. That's not something you requested. You know, that's, that's, that's uh, it, it's basically, um, radio curating it for you or TV curating it. But when you actually choose to tune into something, it's, um, it's a very different sort of interaction. And, um, and that interaction uh, we find a lot more valuable. Sure. Um, now this section is, is very much about you know, building a social sort of community. Mm -hmm. You've created uh, kind of a, your own proprietary uh, piece of software, mm -hmm. uh, the Backplane. Mm -hmm. um, can you just tell us a little bit about that, how it came about, what your thinking is, and, and how you want to leverage it? Well, um, the idea came from uh, Gaga called me one day. She was at, uh, she had just saw the movie The Social Network in New York at the Sony screening room. And she calls me from the screening um, and she says, I got this idea. I want to start my own social network for my fans or whatever. And um, so I called a couple of my buddies. Uh, one of them, uh, Joe Lonsdale, founder of Palantir, in which you guys are here from one of his co-founders. Uh, over the next couple of days. And um, Joe said, just send me your data. I want to see what you guys are working with. And you know, we took two weeks, and we sent him everything. And he basically called me back and said, uh, uh, this data is shit. It, like, you know, it's the worst data I've ever seen. And, um, and, but what we found is that you know, we've never had a direct relationship with the audience. Mm -hmm. you know? So when somebody uh, buys a CD from Best Buy, we count that person as a fan. But we don't really know if they hated the music and tossed the CD out of the window, mm -hmm. um, and and you know and, and it's the same thing with iTunes. You know that's not a direct relationship. You know iTunes owns that relationship with the fan. So the idea behind it was to build this community where we had the direct relationship and we actually own the data and we know the behavior and um, and also being able to to really give. You know we we think the future of of, of social. Um, our micro networks mm -hmm. and these communities that are really built around specific interests. So, um, and, it, and so what we decided to do was actually turn it into, you know, instead of it being a, a, a website, you know, we decided that, you know, this is, um, let's hire the best engineering team that we can find and actually uh, build, build a have a team build a, um, build a platform that's really built around data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you think that data's being used a lot more in the entertainment, well obviously it's being used a lot more than it was, but do you think the entertainment industry generally has been quite slow? You know, they've got this and, huge fan base. And they're it's still not leverage, using it. it. You know, it's, 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 and that's part <coughs> of the frustration. Um, they're still not using the data. And, and, um, and they're still allowing uh, outside forces to be able to control that information. Mm -hmm. So, you know, where, you know, I sit down with a guy like Daniel Eck from Spotify and he shows me the back end of Spotify and, you know, and down to how people are, inter you know, he showed me basically Friday nights, you know, uh, in, 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 in Sweden is when most people listen to Gaga. So basically as they're getting ready to go to the clubs, you know, you see the spike in the music or whatever. But you know, just being able to see specific user behavior around the music. And yeah. so for us, as we plan tours, 
being able to have data like that, and you know, and our platform is still new, so you know, and um, and we, we're still dealing with rights issues. So as some of Gaga's rights uh, free up over the next couple of years, we're going to be able to capture more information. But to know, okay, when I go to uh, South Africa, for instance, I know the, to make sure we include this song in the set because this is, you know, yeah. one of the fan favorites. And I know to take this song out. And I know to, um, I, I, we, we basically know the audience that we're going to play to, you know, prior to us getting there. So, you know, so it's just being able to learn everything we need to know about the fan and also knowing. Uh, when somebody becomes a fan, when they drop off, what other artists are they listening to? So there's a, there's a, there's a lot of things that we're learning now and that we're going to learn in the future. And would you, would you ever use that data, so would it, that, that influence the creative process at all? Or is that something that, do you keep that kind of siloed? I think you keep it siloed. You know, for, for, for me, art is one of those things that, you know, you, it's kind of like a download from God. So, you know, um, <laughs> we, we were in a meeting one day uh, with Google and, um, and we're sitting with Gaga, uh, Larry Page, and a few of us in a meeting. And, uh, and Larry said to Gaga, uh, do you ever A-B test your, your music? And you know, she said, uh, did Picasso A-B test paintings or, or whatever? <laughs> you know, but you know, so I think art, you know, you, it's, it's tough to do art through data. But presumably what you can do, though, is you can control the entire value chain. You can control everything from merchandising the tours. Presumably well, you'll think about releasing the music. No, and, you know, the, and that's what we're doing now. You know, one of the things we learned through the, uh, the Little Monsters and, uh, and where, where's he at? Th and thank you for selling us littlemonsters.com, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one, one of the things we, we learned and we, even how it affects our business, you know, we... Merchandise, for instance, it went up 30%. Our sales went up 30% in merchandise because we started buying fan artwork. So they were creating artwork through the site um, n with no commerce attached to it or anything like that, but just kind of showing their creativity. And we noticed it, and we started, started uh, including that in our actual merch line on a tour. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that fans like art from other fans, you know, so they know what they want better than we know what they want. And we actually saw the increase in business, you know, just uh, being able to, to, to take artwork through the site. And eventually we'll, you know, we'll stream our music through the site, we'll sell our music through the site, we're working on some things now. We already started selling tickets through the site. Our, um, our, our pre-sale through littlemonsters.com actually uh, was hired through our pre-sales with um, some of the major credit card company, companies that we did. And it's actually higher than, um, we A-B tested it against some, some other major pop stars that went on sale at the same time as us. Right. And it was uh, through littlemonsters.com, uh, we beat them fourfold. You know, through through uh, not even their pre-sales, through their actual on-sales. So we actually see the value of these communities already. So, so if I understand it right, uh, the back plane will allow you effectively just to kind of plug a brand into a, into a social social network. So it could be applied to anything in the entertainment industry, sports. And I, yeah, so we're doing we're we're actually we're getting ready to launch one um, with a major sports team. Um, we're, we're doing one around Christianity, we're doing one, you know, so right now we're testing different types of communities mm -hmm. um, over the next six months, but, um, but it's, so it's not just based around music, it's any sort of affinity groups mm -hmm. um, that, that we can find. Now we were talking earlier about uh, your business, there's about 30 people at the Atom Factory. Yeah. One of the things you do also now is you, you're, 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 an invest, you're investing in, in startups and in tech businesses. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about that. How, how, do you kind of, how, how did that develop and what was the, the thinking behind it? It, that well, the the the, the angel fund kind of happened organically. You know, we we found that we were talking to a bunch of dynamic founders, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, for us, the core of our company is, is marketing, positioning, branding, and um, and uh, and a lot of the founders who we who we met were you know these incredible engineers mm -hmm. and um, that were out you know taking on big problems and, and, and changing the world and how we interact with products and services. But um, a lot of them were finding customer acquisition tough mm -hmm. and, um, and, and positioning tough and 
uh, PR and crisis management and those sort of things. And people were coming to us for advice. And they started offering us uh, opportunities to invest in companies. So for, you know, we have about 40 companies in a portfolio um, over the last two years. But, you know, but it just really happened organically. It wasn't planned or, sure. or anything like that. Um, what kind of businesses are kind of exciting you? What, are you? what kind of founders are you looking for? You know, people who are, you know, we, companies from Uber that, you know, that are taking on transportation to uh, Daniel Leck and Spotify that are taking on music distribution. You know, we're, we're in um, all different types of companies. So it's not a specific sector or anything like that. You know, we just, uh, I think the, the common denominator amongst all of, all of the companies are dynamic founders. Right. Yeah. Now, do you allow the, the talent to co-invest as well, or is this? Never. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, can't, I can't make you 200 million bucks and then lose you. 20,000 bucks. And, yeah. Now, it, it, that's a quite a thing now in the entertainment industry, though, isn't it? There seems to be the, a lot of uh, you know, celebrities kind of getting into Obviously, there's been people like Ashton Kutcher who have been doing it for a while, but yeah. it seems to be gathering more momentum now. Yeah. Um, do, do you think that's a kind of a, is, is that a good thing, or is there a lot of kind of like a bit of a gold rush situation developing, a lot of you know, dumb money being invested in? I think it's becoming. So, Ashton is Ashton's probably one of the smartest guys that I've met when it comes to tech because yeah. he. he I, I, there's not too many people who I've met, period, that understands product as well as Ashton. And, um, and he's a guy, and you know, we co-invest alongside of his company a lot. We share a lot of deal flow and a lot of information. Um, but now I'm noticing there's a lot of, um, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't particularly call, I don't want to call it dumb money. I would call it uh, unin uninformed money. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you don't see a kind of a bubble being kind of like driven by, uh, yeah, you by know, the West Coast. It, it, it's a, I think it's a, it, it's, it's, it's a bubble period, mm -hmm. you know, just, you know, and um, with a lot of inflated valuations where people are just coming, coming up with ideas with no technology even built yet, you know, with a $100 million valuation, a $50 million valuation. So, you know, now we're starting to see the valuation shake out a little right. bit and people are kind of coming back to reality and the market's kind of correcting itself. But, um, you know, a lot of people are coming to me, you know, wanting to put money into deals and, you know, we won't, we won't even advise them to do so now. Sure. And which of the companies you've invested in, are you most kind of, I'm sure that there's lots of them you're most excited about, but which is the kind of doing the most kind of disruptive kind of work? You, you know, think? it's actually a young founder out of the UK who um, we invested in this company called Sumley. Mm -hmm. You know, Nick is 16 years old. Um, one of the most, you know, just super smart. And he's, and basically his company, uh, Sumly, they're basically summarizing uh, large articles and, and, and breaking it down into two paragraph bullet points. And he's be, you know, and for young kids that are consuming content, you know, it's kind of how they read anyway. Sure. And then, you know, but to be able to take an entire Wired article or an entire Huffington Post article and, and break it down, you know, and then you kind of choose whether, you know, whether you want to read it or whatever, you know, just kind of based off of those two. And, and, and the science behind it is actually fascinating. Mm. But to know that, you know, this kid that's 16 years old invented this thing is, is incredible. So I'm really excited about that. And another company called Rap Genius that um, Andreessen Horowitz just led the Series A on. We invested in that about a year ago. They, they're basically annotating uh, everything on the internet. So it's, re it's really incredible what they're doing. Um, tell us a little bit, uh, looking forward, 2013, 2014, what, what are you kind of seeing? What's kind of exciting you about what's coming up next? Uh, great music, number one. You know, I'm just, I'm hearing some, uh, some new music that I'm, that I'm excited about. And then, um, and then also just, that thing where you kind of you don't know what's out there mm -hmm. you know because if you know to predict you know some of the things that have happened over the last couple of years i don't think people would have been able to accurately predict a lot of change that's happening and, and because you know i think not only is technology in flux i think the world is in flux right now you know there's a ton of a ton of opportunity out there sure yeah. well we're nearly out of time so just one, one one final question what advice would you give everyone here uh, in terms of kind of like building an influence and network, what would your kind of like key kind of um, insights be that you can offer today? I think right now is uh, really to stay fluid and stay as fluid as possible. And you know, I just, you know, internally in our organization, I'm just encouraging our entire team. Let's not let's you know 
we, we, we know the core of our company is music and, um, you know, and the core of the company is built around management, but let's stay fluid with everything else right now because there, there's going to be a lot of opportunity that, that, that pops up. So, um, so let's, 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 try to live or, let's try to live around the corner. So, you know, when I fly to, to, to out to the UK to speak at a thing like that, at, at like Wired, I'm not just here to, um, to, to, to speak. I'm also here to listen a bit, too, because, you know, it's, it's groups like this that, you know, even at the speaker's dinner last night, I just, I went to bed inspired, kind of listening to, to, to just being able to have a glimpse of what the future looks like. So basically just staying, staying fluid and really staying informed about what's happening. That's great advice. Many thanks. Yeah. Troy, thanks very much for coming to Wired Tomorrow no, 2012. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. I just want to say Troy has come here from L.A., the man with a few things going on. <laughs> it's brilliant you're here. Thank you. Um, so I just wonder if you could help. I'm on Twitter. I'm on I'm I Rowan, uh -huh. and I don't have that many followers. I have one follower, by the way. It's, it's my kids, and they're grouped together. One follower. <laughs> And we're, we're kind of wired UK on Twitter. Could yeah. you help us get like another couple of hundred thousand <laughs> before lunch? I'll have Gaga send a shout out. She can help you. I can't help you. I'll I get think you we'll one take follow. that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.